Would you look at the size of that little house? A oh, house? This is anything far from a house, theory. Yeah, I'm thinking estate. I wonder who lives here. Well, obviously someone of high prestige. <laughs> Exceedingly wealthy, I might have. <laughs> well, from the length of the tree line lining the driveway. Oh, honey, ain't you just voicing the truth? My lights are big in the crib up on me. Oh, Jolly, there's a light on in the uppermost chamber. Uppermost chamber? What are you talking about? You mean the upstairs. Oh, just can't me more than me. Oh, why? I can't believe you. I told you we should have all driven separately. I knew we shouldn't have all driven together. But no, I had to listen to you. Come, come now. What's the use of us all driving separately? A little bit of camaraderie would be good for us all. Oh, and even the ladies, you wear on me. Oh, now you know camaraderie is my only end. I don't understand why we had to walk here in this pouring rain. My hairstyle is going to be so flat, and Madge is going to be so upset. She had such a beautiful job last time, and I don't have another appointment until next week. Of course, I wouldn't want to stay in the car all by my lonesome, where a mentally ill skate combat from maximum security penitentiary could find me. And oh, I'm so you that perhaps haunts the castle. Don't you ever sing before you babble? But forget, don't you ever sing? And I hope for your sake, Stetsons, that somebody's home as his friend of Shackleton Foots. Personally, I thought oh. someone should have stayed with the car. I know that if this were my car, I would have wanted someone watching it around the clock. You think your car that expensive that at least give us spare in the trunk? There is a spare in the trunk. Oh, oh damn, why aren't these now? Don't worry your pretty little head about that, Catherine. I'll take care of it. Oh, why don't you? Then we can all get home. Well, clearly there's more to our situation than a little flat tire. Oh, if Catherine had not screamed at that leaf, that little cross the road, I'd have been here and stopped and drove a car off the road. Says, you would have just left behind the wheel. No, 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 Oh my goodness, Stanton, how do you expect to fake anyone up at this hour with that dang, dainty English gentleman's rock? And a Sherman at it! Well, if you must know, I was a little uneasy at waking someone. Oh, waking someone? Isn't that what we fun to do? Make someone? Do you happen to have the telephone on the pills? Why, yes, sir. Most states do. After all, that is the device we use to alert the authorities of prowling riffraff as such. Well, would you be so kind in to allow us, sir, my companions, oh, any due to the pains of this here telephone? What Mr. Payne is trying to say is we're all stranded here in the middle of nowhere, our car broke down, we have a flat tire, and we can't get to the outside world, and you are the means of the only way out. Now what does the matter with this phone? My dear lovely woman, if you notice, the phone is not in working order and hasn't been for hours. Uh, you can thank the store for that. I'm certainly not. Uh, wow, well, I'm just taking that. It is a lot to steal on. What a horrible storm. They do flicker from time to time, madam. Although, it seems you are used to things flickering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, would you just look at this here face? Age is alive with the treasure. It's a loss, madam, and don't even think about it. Okay, let's see. The phone doesn't work. Hmm, there's gotta be another way. Might have some string and some tin cans, maybe? Oh, darling, you're oh, just so real. I just love that little game. Oh, game? This is not a game, dearie. We're all stuck here in the middle of nowhere and we're stranded. This is not a game. We're all going to die. Oh. Is that anything that they drop to you? Of course not. She's got her pills, doesn't she? Huh? Pills? Well, give her six down little, little pills. Here, oh, let me get some water for them to slide down so smoothly because I'll choke on your tongue. Madam, please! Oh, no worries. Miss Bellweather needs no water. For as far as you can see, she's used to taking them straight up. Oh, disgusting. Oh, no. Hello? Reginald, what are you
are you doing up having a party at this hour? Master Richards, this is anything but a party. Okay, well, don't be rude, Reginald. Introduce me to your friends. Oh, friends? Friends! Friends! friends. <laughs> Intruders! What's the matter, Reginald? Are you actually being forced to work? If only I could be so fortunate. Okay, well, someone introduce someone. Here, allow me to go first. My name is Richards. Richards Master, that is. Welcome to my estate. Now, what brings you all here, especially at this hour? Now, Now, where were we? 
You were just asking us to send to spend an hour. Yo. Ah uh, yes. Okay. So then it's seven. <laughs> six, but no six. I don't think you quite understand the situation here. <laughs> we have to be home tonight. You see, she she, my cat. She gets very mad when I leave her home alone, and she does terrible things to my house when she's mad. So you see, we have no other option than to be home tonight. Now. <sighs> you spare like that little cat duck. Oh. Can't you see that this darling man has just invited us to stay in his gorgeous house of his? Oh, Catherine, sometimes you can be a real name cop pop. Well, she certainly has our minds made up. So, when's the next bus leave for Greenwood? I didn't know the bus was right up here. No kidding. Where's the stop? We should be home in no time. No wonder these two get along so well. There are no buses out here. Well, if you would have been mindful of your superiors, when I began to speak, we would have realized that A, we no longer have any means of transportation, oh. B, we don't have any communications with the outside world, mm. C, there are no buses that run up here, especially at this hour, and D, Anita, your feline companion, oh. would enjoy a nice, restful evening without you. Oh. And you're 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 Master Richard has invited us to stay, and I for one think it will be the best thing for us to do. Agreed. Well, what other choice do we have? Anyone? Anyone got an answer? Anyone? Say anything! Alright, well, I guess it's settled. <laughs> so, listen, <laughs> let me quietly show you to your rooms, and remember Reginald is asleep. Okay? Thank you. Shoot you. <laughs> Oh, sure. Reginald is asleep. You know, Catherine, sometimes you can be a real nincompoop. What? Um, nothing, honey. Catherine, honey, what's the matter, baby? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Cat. You can tell Philly Willie. It's nothing. Now just leave me alone. Come on, what's eating at her? I can tell her where there's something wrong with my puppy feet. Oh, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with your puppy feet. Now just go to bed and leave me alone. Okay, I can read through this. Every time that you say there's nothing wrong, that means there really is something wrong. You want me to keep on asking till you finally tell me. Now come on, what's the matter? <laughs> well, come on, Cap. Well, then. Come on! Well, they never gave me a chance for me to show them how smart I really am. You know, she really hurt my feelings. I, I don't like to poop her. You know, Anita, sometimes you can be a cold, ruthless, manipulative, heartless, and sensitive, neurotic, rude to speak, and downright inhumane being. <laughs> well, I guess you told her. Too bad she wasn't the one who heard it all, though. It's a shame that you wasted all those good words on me. Now, speaking of hearing, why don't we hit the hay? I'm a little sleepy. Why don't you be a dear and run along and turn down those little covers on that little bed, and little old me will be right up. Where are you going? I know that pompous butler doesn't want you to touch anything, and I know you. You have plants to leave fingerprints. Why, I never. I just want to look at all this finery for a little bit. And maybe touch one eensy beansy. Aha! See, I knew it. Detective Philip Intern can always uncover the truth. You are deliberately going to touch that face because he said you couldn't. I know my pumpkin breath. All right, so I was gonna touch it. It's not such a crime anyway. It's just a stupid old piece of glass. No. I wasn't gonna break it. Now, Catherine, you will, you know what will happen. You'll pick it up and something will scare you, and you'll drop it and it'll smash into a million pieces, and you'll have to face the wrath of Mr. Finicky. Now, come on, leave it alone. Maybe he'll soften up in the morning, and I'll ask him if he can examine that face a little closer. Oh, why is it that you male species always get your point in the end result of it all? I guess it's because we're so lovable. <laughs> that ain't there. <laughs> Say good night, Catherine. Good night, Catherine. <laughs> Don't ask.
upstairs, you know, laughing. Ooh, you always must be make something more for his gifts. Ooh, I get woken up in the middle of a sound sleep. And just when Prince James was fixing to kiss me. <laughs> and for what? To make hot chocolate and crumpets for these natives that I don't even know. Tough for them. They got caught in the rain. What am I supposed to do about it? Make them all nice and cozy with their hot drinks? Well, I don't think so. <laughs> and where they gone off to anyway? In bed, I'm sure. Ooh, girlfriend. Always trying to outdo each other. 
phone, they'd step back every once in a while to see how foolish they really looked at everyone else around them. Because heaven knows I'm not like them. It's no wonder I don't fit in. Well, would you look here? Some has just jumped right into my little hands. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? The author I'm known. Well, sure does right here. I got all kinds of things with his name on me. Who am I? Will they ever see the me that I should be? Will they ever know the me that doesn't show? How I long to be seen as a person with wits. Will they never realize it's me they cause a twinge? Will they ever give from this life that we all live? Will they ever try to stop living a lie? How I wish they would care to look beyond this hair. See that I'm free. Free to be who I'm intended to be. If they would give me a chance, chance to speak what's on my mind, I'm sure they would find a beautiful, intelligent person called me. Why, that sounds as if it was written directly for me. How could anybody else possibly feel the way that I do? And right here, in a book to boot. And why do we get together once here with all these people that we don't even like, just to be made fun of? I don't care if it, if it was tradition they started years ago. Well, Philip was just a bitty boy when they met on that cruise. And Whose idea was it to continue to get together once a year for a reunion? I'd say all good things must come to an end. <laughs> huh, maybe that's why it has. It is not a good thing. <laughs> oh my lord, this is how we're gonna end. Oh, this place is just so gorgeous. All these fine, fancy belongings just sitting around waiting for me to touch. <laughs> I believe I'm just gonna sit my little self down right in a soft, cushy chair. Now, as far as I can see, opportunity's just not. I'd say I had a fight like a herd of pigs running the slot to touch this face. Oh, pardon me, sir. Vogue. Well, or not, nobody's right. I'm gonna pick it up and inspect the dickens out of it. Now that's a cheap old limitation anyway. Think of it. Just like that Clifford R. Sterling Jr. the third. About as fake as they make him. Always make him like he's a Mr. Goody Goody. When we all know, deep down inside that creative mess, he's a mean old buzzer. Only looking out for his own heart. We're all afraid to say anything. We're afraid that we might tramp on his precious toesies. Or he might go ahead and kill himself. Because the truth, and who'd want that hanging over their head? It's a shame he don't even know who he really is. Always pretend to be somebody else. <coughs> Trapped in some other character all the time. Really though, somebody ought to dance on his parade. What's that ring on his parade? Anyway, let's see. Where was I? Oh, yeah. I was fixing to talk about that Stanley Pete Payne. They sure picked him right when they were divvying out last names. <laughs> they picked the Peter Payne that that man ain't never wrong. So he likes to sick. And the sad thing is, we keep learning him think that he's not. I'll tell you, if it wasn't for his creativity, we'd be in our own snuggly homes, basking in our own treasures, missing out on all this fun, expensive wealth placed right here at our fingertips. I just can't imagine what it must have cost to possess all these fine things. And here we are, in the lap of the finest luxuries, not paying a single shiny dime to stay here. And all that I need a fair weather to think about is feeding her precious cats. Well, I'll tell her a thing or two about cats. I hate them cats of hers. I wish they'd get gone. I'd like to put them under Stan's car. And we'll see yeah. her. I didn't touch it. Oh, touch what? I don't know, but I didn't touch it. <laughs> I didn't say you did. I heard someone up and wanted to see who it was and what they were doing. What's the matter? Can't sleep. Oh, I can sleep just fine.
if I'd gone to bed. I just thought I'd stay up and smell the bask in this rich man's belongings. It is nice, isn't it? Nice. This place. Just, just making every breath escape from me. It's just screaming with beauty. It is generous of Mr. Master to let us stay here tonight, especially not knowing us. What a fine man. What a fine man. What a fine face. If I didn't know any better, I'd say we're taking shine of Mr. Richards. Oh, no. Yeah, I just appreciate his hospitality. I know, isn't it? Well, would you look at this? I could just slip this into my pocketbook. And you'd probably never even miss it. Catherine? Oh, Deborah, you know I'm just big in. I know you are, dear. But I do like an awful heap. Catherine? What is it, honey? Are you all right? Well, of course I am. I eat right and I take vitamins every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, not physically. Inside. How are you inside? I can't tell. I have never been inside to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't help but tell how you didn't hurt your feelings. Oh, that? That's nothing new and strange. It's just the way she is. She hurts everybody's feelings. You get used to it. I suppose so. Catherine? Yes, Deborah? How is your heart? What does it say to you? Are you sad? Are you happy with the way that you live? I just couldn't help but notice that you haven't seemed happy all night. Well, I don't have all these nice things, but I'm happy. Philly and I, we love each other a heap. There's nothing that he wouldn't do for me. I'd stick by him no matter what. He may be a little high crazy about his job. There's most likely nothing that he takes more serious. But I love him, and I love my when I'm with him. He makes me feel like I'm somebody. And Sure enough, my tea picking heart says to be happy. So, I'm happy. Well, I'm glad for you and Philip, but you know, there's more to life than being happy with who you're married to. There is? Well, I don't need anything else. Well, of course there is. Don't misunderstand me. Who you spend the rest of your life with is very important. But Catherine, I know somebody who can make you happy all the time, and who can even help you when you're feeling sad. Huh? And leave Phil? I can never do such a hurtful thing all my days of living. Oh, no, well, he's not someone who can see, but someone who can feel and... Well, how am I supposed to know him if I can't even see him? Well, you can't see him because he... Ah-ha! Was... I know what her voice is down here! Get some sleep in the to be off with monkey. What's up, Stephen? And just what do you two think you're doing up at this hour? No thing, I presume? We're just chatting. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, something you know how to do real well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's past your bedtime. It was your bedtime two hours ago. Well, you go on up, Anita. We'll be right behind. Oh, no. I'll wait right here until you two go up to bed. This room is right below my headboard, and I'm going to see to it that you go to sleep so I can sleep. We were just discussing, discussing something, Anita. What's that with you? Oh. You were talking about your happy hearts, and they could be just as happy as they were then. Now go to bed. She's right, Catherine. We're not getting anywhere with. Well, we can discuss this some other time. Let's not upset the deer. Good night, Benita. Good night. Good night, Catherine. Good night, Deborah. Keep snuggling warm and remember what we were talking about, because heaven knows I'll forget my morning. I want to know more about this man who I can't even see. Imagine that, Anita. My heart would be happy on account of some fellow I don't even know. Yes, imagine that. Well, what are you waiting for? Someone to take your impressions, precious? Well, that's not going to happen. I was just thinking about something Deborah said. Oh, well, think it over in your dreams. Now go to bed. Catherine, 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 put that face down this instant and march yourself up to bed. Uh, uh,
did it to Brooke? Oh, but I didn't break it. She's about to put her stick oh, in the face on it. Down. Everyone, please, this is just calm down. Just, please, calm down. I'm sure there's a, a logical explanation for this. And just who do you suppose we should ask for this logical explanation? I have been instructed to remain calm in a situation like this. First, we discover the victim's dead body. That would be here. Oh, the man is a joke. <laughs> Second, we declare that the victim is indeed dead. Yep, she's indeed dead. Watch out, Sherlock! Oh. Now, we find the evidence, the broken vase, the key. What is he doing? Now, suspects! You're not saying that I did I didn't say anything, you simply volunteered. Oh, I never did such hey, thing. Hey, uh, why don't we all, uh, oh. let's take a seat, and we'll continue Hold to discuss this, this civilly. Let's discuss this civilly. Uh, shouldn't we remove civilly first? No, no, absolutely no one touch her! At least not until we get Tracy of where the body fell. <laughs> he really takes this detective stuff seriously, doesn't he? She was his wife. Well then, it is his job. And this is going to be a long evening. I'm never gonna get my beauty sleep. Madam, you couldn't sleep long enough. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I have full confidence in Philip. Uh, perhaps we should try to remain silent and allow him to handle the details here. I don't get it! How could so much have happened in so little time? One minute she's here, and the next... <laughs> <laughs> oh, pardon me, the bleeding piece of earth, <laughs> that I am meek and gentle with these butchers. <laughs> Thou are the noblest woman to ever live in the tides of time. <laughs> Woe to the hands that shed thy costly blood! And the next, she's gone. <laughs> what do you mean that she's gone? She's right there, Mr. Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any witnesses who discovered the body? Obviously, the person who woke us discovered the body first. The question is, how did it occur? Perhaps we should let Zilla handle those details for us. Yeah, I'm the detective and I'll ask the questions. Yes. First, were there any witnesses? Yes, yes. Anita, you were here first. Second, who discovered the body? Anita, you were the one screaming. Oh. And third, how did it occur? Anita! Anita! Ask her! She was there before me. Hey, is that a falsehood or a true statement? Of course it's a true statement! Okay, yes. Deborah was present. Where were you? Oh, good question. Well, where were you 15 minutes ago? I was brushing my teeth. Brushing your teeth? Do you have an alibi? You could check my wet toothbrush. Hey, where did you get the toothbrush? I found it in my bathroom. Oh, we all got one and the roll. Go on, go on. I, for one, like the robe of choice given to me. It suits me just fine. <laughs> yes, it does. Very artsy. Oh, Well, let's just say that in this house, we have a very large selection of guest apparel. And you guys remember Florence, right? Yeah. Well, she's the best. So, uh, shouldn't we just go on with the investigation? Oh, yes. yes! Go on, go on! Go, go, go! <laughs> <laughs> you were asking Deborah where she was just a few moments ago. Oh, yes, thank you. Where were you 15 minutes ago? Like I said, I was brushing my teeth. Huh. Okay. Nineteen minutes ago. That would 
be when they left Catherine and Anita oh. fighting over going to bed. Oh, so they were fighting. Well, I don't know about fighting. Maybe Anita was just strongly suggesting. Oh, strongly suggesting what? Well, I'm quite surprised. No defense, Anita. Oh, since I have no reason to be here any longer, I shall retire myself to bed again. Put her right there, mister. Don't take another step. In case you are forgotten, you are a suspect, Mr. Butler. <laughs> <laughs> Me? A suspect? Absurd. I was asleep hours ago. Oh, that's right. The butler did it. Right. <laughs> Tea, anyone? No, Reginald, please, be patient. Mr. Intern is clearly just trying to do his job. Right, now, Anita, what were you strongly suggesting? That she should go to bed. Okay, so far we have one victim, one broken face, <coughs> one suspect. <coughs> I do hate to bring this up, I really do. But, as I was playing the role of Agatha Christie's famous Detective Hockey that role, I was instructed to take in a free aim. I hate that Vinny Simpson chose these other characters. But this Mr. Dramatic talking about... Be patient, Mum. I'm, I'm getting to that. Yes, what he has to say. Shh. Listen. <laughs> in this particular role, I have to... Learn! I had to feel. I had to be. What would solve the mystery? <laughs> Trying to take over a job, eh? Oh, yes. Uh, Philip, perhaps Clifford has noticed something that the rest of us have overlooked. Um, please, wouldn't you like to hear what he has to say for your records? Go ahead there, Cliff, for the records. Clifford! <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 look around you. What do you see? Do you notice anything strange? <laughs> Anita, the broken walls. Philip, Philip, your deceased wife. Stanton. Mm. I'm not spare. Oh, I can't. Silence! <laughs> 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 Catherine! Dear, dear Catherine! Deceased! <laughs> Departed from us! <laughs> Never to embrace our lives! <laughs> Beside her, the dish she alone ate from since we arrived. Could it be poison? <laughs> it's not poison. I'm sorry. They're all loony. <laughs> I give the dish to you, and I take. My mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, all I have to say is I'm quite glad you weren't suggesting to me to go to bed, or well, that might be me laying oh, on the floor. You're not insinuating that. Oh, of course not, Miss Fairweather. I'm sure that this oh, is all this is not exactly. Are you saying stop that? I'm merely pointing out the facts. And oh, you're. Right, yeah, since uh, Mr. Intern now has gathered some of the facts, perhaps we should let him be alone to sort through them on his own. Philip! Yes, everyone to bed. I personally will escort you to your rooms. <laughs> I just want to call you see me. No one cares about your cat. She has a bad cat. Oh, you feed it too much food. <laughs> Oh, I'm not quiet. 
Sarah. Shut 
Oh, where have I left that thing? It's got to be right here somewhere. Did I leave it in the car? No, I had it when we went to our rooms. Hmm. Well, I guess I didn't need it tonight anyway. I can find it in the morning. attention when Reginald was giving us the tour. All I want is a drink of water. I just can't seem to find the kitchen. All of these hallways keep leading back to this room. I bet that vase was an heirloom. After all, Reginald was so protective of it. I do sort of wonder what Mr. Master does for a living and what it is that makes him the way he is. Such a kind, giving man, even to a bunch of strangers. He didn't have to let us stay here tonight. He could have turned us away. Anyone else would have. I know I would have. Although Anita did sort of barge our way into his home. Aha! A snoop trying to disrupt my research! You are a suspect, you know. You shouldn't be anywhere near the scene of the crime. Now, what is in the mix, you leader? Oh, come on, speak up! Philip, I, I was up because of the storm, and I thought I would look to the kitchen to get a drink to of water. To get a knife? To get a drink of water. What's wrong with the water in your bathroom? I guess I hadn't thought of it. <laughs> you hadn't thought of it? Good. Sit down. What? You heard me. Sit down. I want to ask you a few questions. <laughs> Sometimes they have to be humored. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all yours. Okay, now tell me everything you know. Everything? Well, be more specific. I know quite a bit about many things. <laughs> you know what I mean. Just tell me everything you know. Tell you everything I know about what? You know? Like I said, I don't know. I know many things, and you'll need to be more specific. There has been a murder tonight, and you are here. There. Just tell me everything you know. About the murder? Yes, Deborah. We're not going to get anywhere if you play this little game of yours. I'm not playing a game, Philip. I know you think I'm a suspect to your wife's death. Now, what is it you need to know? Details! I need mean details! This case has got to be solved by the morning, or I'm not Detective Anton. Well, shall I start at the beginning? Why, yes! Where else would you start? Let's see. Catherine was over here holding the vase when I first saw her, and I was over here, and right as we walked in, had a Order right her. there, Miss Meadows! Over where? Where was Catherine? Where were you? Where exactly was the base? Was it here or was it here? Every inch of difference makes a big difference in detective work. Now, you know, be specific! I'll try, Philip. A lot has happened this evening and I'm a little unnerved about everything. Just try, please! All right. Well, Catherine was here. Or no, I was. I was holding the vase, so she was. Oh, I don't know. Didn't we go over this earlier with everyone? Just taking the facts, ma'am. Just taking the facts. Sometimes stories change whenever they're made up. People forgot what they said the first time, and they give you a whole nother story. That's when you catch the real killer, Mr. Intern. Well, as you can play Detective Intern, that is. Well, excuse me, Detective Intern. I will have you know that I have nothing to cover up. Therefore, I have no reason to lie about it. I should think that by now you know me well enough to know that I do not lie. And I'm a little offended that you would even insinuate to such a thing. I had nothing against Catherine. She was a friend to me. I had no reason to harm her and would never, ever have a reason to kill her. Okay, I can see that we're getting nowhere. Seems to me that the interrogation approach is the mad thing to kick and fill up. Well, as you can plainly see, tactics 101, 102, and 103 did not go so well. So, 111 and 112 are the next steps in the detective manual. <laughs> Philip, you don't need to use your manual. Then what do you suggest I use? Use your ability to uncover the truth with the evidence that you have accumulated. <sighs> Why do I try? I'm sorry? It's not working. Nothing ever works for me. I try and I try. Mother always said do your best, and that's what I've always done, so I thought. But Sarge always said your best was never good enough. And now that I'm and someone who was a friend, but someone who I thought was a friend has killed my darling wife, and I can't even put the pieces together to help her. Philip. Catherine was your wife. You were in love.
love with this victim. But, but <laughs> I think you're handling it all very well, one step at a time. I really think so. <laughs> of course I do. You're the only one who can solve things like this. You have been given the ability to help others out of situations they couldn't even begin to know where to solve themselves. Not everyone can do that. You really think so? <laughs> of course I do. But what am I going to do about Catherine? Well, it'll be hard now, but with time you'll learn how to move on without her. You mean forget her? No, not forget her. You'll never forget her. She was your wife. She had a very important role in your life. But what you need now is someone to encourage you, someone to give you confidence in yourself, and someone to love you for who you are. You could do that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. I'm so confused. I know most of you think that this detective work I do is just a game. And that's okay. The satisfaction I get from helping people out of tough times, that's my business. And I love the work that I do. Sure, I can go a little overboard sometimes, but it's serious stuff. Now that my dear Catherine's gone, I don't even have her to share it with anymore. Philip, I'm serious. There is someone out there who can love you for who you are, inside and out. That's, that's what I can't do. There's someone who could love me inside and out? I don't get it. Here, honey, just sit down. What? Just listen to me, okay? <sighs> okay. Fact number one. You need help. Oh. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Fact number two. You need help beyond you and me. Ooh, agreeable, but confusing. Just hear me out. Fact number three. I have a manual of solutions that can help you with any problem that you may come up against. I think it could be helpful to you and your work. For me, as well as my work? And I can keep it? Of course you can keep it. Now, how about if I help you solve this case since it is a little bit closer to you? Your emotions can get hard to handle at times. I'm sure it can be difficult to keep all the facts straight. It is. You can do that? Wait, you're a suspect. You can help. Philip, we're all a suspect. You are a suspect. Oh, yeah. That's right. Now, the next thing. <laughs> do not say another word about that manual. If I hear another word about that stupid I Spy set I got you for Christmas last year, I'm going to. You know what? Kill me, too! <laughs> Oh, I know so 
claws, a spider. It's Philip! He's... 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 Calm down. You must do something with the body before everyone wakes up again from hearing you screaming, or we'll never get our sleep. Oh, two dead bodies tomorrow evening. I just don't think I can take all this excitement. My mother. I'll go visit my mother in New York. That's it. I won't even pack my new pajamas. I'm out the door. Oh, ooh, Miss, you take another step. I'll make sure that you don't work another day in your life on account of your little broken bones. Oh, all these certain the are coming at me from everywhere. What to do? What to do? All right, now, let's think rationally. Don't worry, Florence, we'll think for you. <laughs> I've got it! We can hide his body. In the morning, no one will even know he was with us. No one will even know that he was gone. Ooh, that's about the stupidest idea I have ever heard. Oh, nobody just disappears without somebody wondering where they go. Oh, dearie, do you have a better idea? Because one of us is going to be accused of killing him, and it's not going to be me! I'm going to my room! Go to your room, Miss Fella, that will tell them all you killed them both! Oh, then grab an arm! Oh, this is him. Him. Yeah. I'm gonna grab another dead person's arm! Sure. My mother isn't gonna believe her little girl to have me such important things! <laughs> oh, hey, shh, 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 Somebody's coming! No! No! Don't leave! No! 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 <laughs>
He's gone now. No need to fret over something we can't find. Oh! Mm. Help! Well, cheerio. Don't stay awake too late. People aren't lasting too long into the night. Stop <laughs> 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 Stanton, by the way, do you mind if I address you as Stanton? Oh, please do. Please okay. Do. 
Like, I don't know much about you. All I do know is from what I've observed the last couple of hours since you've been in my home. And, I'm sorry, here, have a seat. Take a seat, please. Quite all right. Now, Stanton, I want you to tell me what's bothering you. What? what? What's bothering me? Aren't you a bit concerned that two people have been murdered? Two? Did I say two? <laughs> well, yes, two. Anita has knocked off another. That poor, ignorant detective wasn't even aware of what hit him. Okay, so you do know, but is that really what's bothering you? No, well, how absurd. What else could you be talking about? Well, tell me, why not be honest with yourself? Don't you get tired of always having to be right about everything? What? Are you afraid to let other people see who you really are? What? Or do you even know who that is? Well, with all due respect, think me not too bold to inform you that I think you may be a bit out of line. Oh, am I out of line? Hmm. Let me tell you what I see, and if I'm wrong, I'll ask for forgiveness. But if I'm right, promise me that you'll at least think about what I say. Agreed? If it will please you. Okay, very well. Stanton, I see you on the outside as most people do. You're confident and secure. But there's more to you, isn't there, Stanton? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, there seems to be a less than confident side, an insecure side. You see, you won't allow anyone to get too close to you because they just might see that vulnerable side that you've been protecting. Are you afraid of what other people will think of you then? What, 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 no. Or, once given the truth, are you afraid that the handful of friends you do have won't want to be around you any longer? Stanton, why must you always be first? Why don't you try to allow other people to come before you? Humble yourself and be the last to speak. You'll learn so much more about people by merely observing. And you'll be pleasantly surprised in the way people begin to treat you. Draw close to them, and in turn, they will draw close to you. You are quite intriguing, Miss Richards. I don't know what to say. Except don't say I... anything. I just want you to think about what I said. And remember, Stanton, your actions will speak much louder to those around you than your words. Mr. Masters, I want to Stanton. Good night. Good night. So. Multi-party? Could say 
one killed you long enough to do anything of this consequence. What happened, Anita? Oh, why does everyone blame me for these mysterious deaths? I have done nothing. I don't even lift you. I'm only stuck here in this death trap because I can't... Now, why do you think everyone suspects you? Oh. Let's face it, Anita. You are always the first one to discover the victim. Oh. Yes, my love. There are only three of us remaining. <laughs> death next to love is insignificant. But, will you stop at nothing? Does it not matter to you that these, those now hidden in the cleft of the rock, were once names and faces you held in your heart? Oh, he's crazy! Listen to him! I'd rather not, madam! Oh, oh I have to agree with the screamer. He can get a little child with blood at times. <laughs> She is making very good sense. <laughs> oh, my Deborah, you look ravishing. That is quite the rope. Oh, I thank you, Clifford. I like yours as well. Oh. Fix your personality. As does great. yours. Thank you. If you're finished on the runway, we should carry on and dispose of the remains. Oh, ooh, but our freezer ain't getting any bigger now. Do you want to kill it? I suspect this is to believe that you're just out of all their own good nature. A oh, very interesting thought. Oh, I think you're all crazy. I won't listen to you. When you wake up in the morning, we will all be gone from this vile place, and you will see that it was just a tiresome dream, and I will not be accused of anything else. Good night. Jesus. <laughs> Not in my dreams. I'm going to bed before she gets me next. And if I were you, I'd bolt my door. Come, my darling. I'll escort you to your room and see to it you are safely locked in as well. Good night. Ooh, now, Reg, if you got it in your little mind that I'm gonna drag that out of this room, you gotta rethink yourself. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Again. <laughs> and don't you even think of waking me up until all these birds are gone. Good night. Again. <laughs> Where does one find good help these days? Yes. Nonetheless, there's work to be done. Hmm. Go ahead, Florence. Be that German. Dispose of Mr. Payne before dawn. Ah, yes. And Florence, do try to realize that this mound of clay won't fit underneath the rug. Good night! <laughs> My mother isn't going to like this. I'm not being treated with respect here. They will take off to bed and leave me with... Florence, honey, you are a girl with the problem. Well, come on. You've got a job to do. Richard, may I intrude? Well, it seems like you already have, Reginald. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you need? Well, sir, I have to tell you, I don't understand. Okay, Reginald, how many times... Don't. I know. Before I agree to use you, let me remind you that you may not always understand what happens in the realms of these walls. Mm -hmm. A quote from you that I often remind myself. So then, what's the problem? The problem is, in all these years of working for you, I've never inquired what specific occurrences in this household really represent. But this one is far too perplexing. Perplexing? Reginald, what's too difficult for you to understand? In fact, is this even necessary for you to understand it? I suppose not. Okay. But people don't just drop dead for no reason at all. Okay, I mean, I admit the, the happenings of this evening have been a little bit strange. Strange? 
or the abnormal are words that come to mind. Nevertheless, things that happen are because they're meant to happen, Reginald. People dropping like flies is supposed to happen. Look, I don't understand. Right. Look, just be patient. The others will be here shortly, and then I'll explain the events of these friends to all of you at once. Please have a seat. Just when you think you're going to get a little sleep, someone goes and wakes you up. What could he possibly want? I have been doing overtime here tonight. Drag this one. <gasps> Good morning, Florence. Mr. <laughs> Richards, good to see you, sir. I was just talking about... Please, there's no need to explain. Please, uh, just have a seat. Thank you. Ah, Miss Alta. Thank you for joining us. Ooh, I gotta tell you. I ain't getting enough beauty rest. Never before has the truth been spoken so accurately. <laughs> Ooh, you gonna say something to him? Watch me knock him out. <laughs> I ain't afraid in gloves. <laughs> Please have a seat. Please, all of you. Please have a seat. Now, I realize that the happenings of this evening have been a little bit strange, and you've all responded very, very well. And for that, I must thank you. I realize how difficult it must be to continue to fulfill task after task without having the knowledge of the end result. Now, in order for you to work most properly for me, you've all agreed to come here and allow me to mold you into the person that I need you to be. You've all given up your time, and you barely ask for anything in return. What more can a master of a household ask for? Oh, if it's not too much trouble, sir, I like some bagels from a fifth and rod they make the Bagels with lots and cream cheese. Slowly, the man is being serious, and all you can think about is bagels. It's okay, Reginald. Please allow me to continue. You see, this house represents a workshop, and you've all seen a lot of people come to this house and experience life. Oh, not tonight. There were nothing about death, I tell you. There's a whole around us. Right, not life of this world, but a life to bring them to an understanding of who they are and why they were created. The group that's in this house actually represents today's society, like that of Mr. Payne. And you do spell that P-A-I-N, I presume. Reginald, seriously? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. But sometimes the truth does penetrate. Right, look, Mr. Payne is only concerned with his own comfort. He always needs recognition for being right, and he exalts himself above the others. Ooh, and he spares the truth. <laughs> oh, I hope to. And if you think about dear sweet Catherine. Oh, sweet Catherine. I had to check her drawers after she died, because she might have been stealing us flying. Exactly. Very good, Florence. That's exactly how she was. You see, Catherine thought that if she had things, beautiful things that belonged to others, she could dream that they belonged to her. And in that, find her significance. Ooh, Master, I was got to tell you, with that Anita Fairweather, always by her side, ain't no wonder she didn't know who she was. That Anita Fairweather did bossing around like she's the master. Only one master of this house, and somebody's got to tell her. Mm -hmm. You're right, Miss Alta. Someone does need to tell her. You see, Anita is always bossing her friends around because she feels inferior to everyone else. A stone does not quickly respond to correction. How does one hear what is being spoken to them when the mouth is constantly spouting off? Ah, but as you recall, each one of these who have gone to meet eternity this evening like detective intern who was hiding his need for acceptance, stood silent, even though just for a moment, to hear a word of truth about their innermost being. Like Stanton, Stanton was told to decrease so that others may increase. Catherine was told about happiness from an unseen man. Philip was told of someone who would love him unconditionally, yet none of them would let go of what society has created them to be. Oh, Reggie, I think it's starting to make sense to me a little. I do. I really do. Florence, any more I could see what Master Richards is saying, the necessity of pointing it out, uh, it out is not of importance. Oh. Ooh, but sweetie, and he's speaking the truth now. I've got to say, I got here way down with darkness. Yes. Trying to be something out of it. Mm -hmm. But I have seen the light. Well, I've seen the light. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Miss Alta, you have seen the light. And you've not only heard what I've been telling you, you've not only seen what I've been teaching you,
but you actually applied it into your life. And therein lies the difference. Well, I hope they wise up swiftly. There's not many of them left. That's true, there's not. But Reginald, there's a time for everything. And there's a season for every activity. There's a time to be born, and there's a time to die. There's a time to kill, and a time to heal. There's a time to weep, and a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn, and there's a time to dance. Whatever happens in a person's life is because they are set on a course. It is merely up to them to remain or stray from the course that's been chosen for them. Whatever the case, the choice is theirs. Now, let us continue to assist these remaining few, keeping in mind that they are our guests. We are here to serve them. Shutting away of hearts in the hard ground. So it is, and so it will be. Time out of mind. Into the darkness they go. The wise and the lovely. Crowned with the lilies and the laurel they go. But I am not resigned. Lovers and thinkers into the earth with you. Be one with the dull, the <coughs> indiscriminate dust, a fragment of what you felt, of what you knew. A formula, a phrase remains, but the best is lost. The answers quick and keen, the honest look, the laughter, the love, they are gone. They are gone to feed the roses, elegant and curled is the blossom. Fragrant is the blossom, but 
I do not approve. More precious was the light in your eyes than all the roses in the world. Down, down, down into the darkness of the grave. Gently, they go. The beautiful, the tender, the kind. Quietly, they go. The intelligent, the witty, the brave. I know, but I do not approve, and I am not resigned. Am I resigned? I do not know. What do you think? What precisely do you mean, mate? Resigned to what? You don't even understand a job. Come on! Speak up! Life is but a stage, and you're in the spotlight. Cliff! Come here! <laughs> you're not listening to me, kid. Think about what I'm telling you here. Are you ready to die? Are you ready to be alone? Can you face not being in this world? What would it be like without you? Would they even notice you was gone? Ah, my brother, that is a very good question. Very good, good, good. But he's dead anyway. <laughs> One can you not worry about the dead. No, the major big worry is who am I? And what of myself made? Ah, in political most? What am I leaving behind? Ah, Cleversa. This is a question only you can answer for yourself. Silence, I say! All of you! Before he finds 
one for himself? That is a good question, Clifford. All right, sir, you love me? How long have you been spying? For quite some time. What do you mean, quite some time? Since the beginning. Stop it! You're confusing me! Emma? I'm sorry, but you need to know, Clifford. No! I don't. You have lived your life as though you have been on the stage. How many characters must you portray before you find one for yourself? You said yourself that you have hidden behind the characters of the theater. Can't you see that you are an individual? You have worth. You have meaning. You have a reason to live. You must simply be who you were created to be. Clifford R. Sterling, Jr., the third. But I don't know who that is! Just close your eyes, Clifford. Just trust me, close your eyes. Who are you? Who are you when it's dark? Who are you when you're alone? You don't have to be all those different characters. The one that's scared. The one that's confused. The one that doesn't understand the meaning of life. The one that doesn't know what tomorrow may bring. Dare to be the person that works within. And there you will find the real Clifford R. Sterling, Jr. Deborah, I'm tired of playing this theatrical game. I'm tired of hiding behind all these characters. Will you help me? Will you help me find myself? Yes, Clifford, I will. You must believe in your heart the truth, and that truth alone will set you free. My advice to you is to take a few moments alone, as Clifford, not as someone else. Search your heart and your very being, and there you will find the real Clifford. Good night. Is that you? I'm glad you came back. There's something I wanted to ask you. Stay back! 
is like always trying to be the one in control. Oh, huh. me in control? You're crazy. I won't listen to you. You're just trying to distract me like you did to everyone else so you can slaughter me too. Anita, oh. listen to me. You cannot continue to live in this oh. dominant world that you have created. And neither do you all stand back from me. My purpose tonight has been to expose the lie that society has birthed within us. Anita, you must rid yourself of this affliction before oh. it's too late. I don't need to take a hit. chose to surrender their will for my will. Do you know who that was? Clifford. Yes, it was Clifford. You see, I knew that each one would go on to meet eternity tonight, not by the hand of another, but by divine appointment. For it is written that it is appointed unto man once to die, and then after death, judgment. And as the final curtain of life descended, each chose their eternal destiny. You see, all you can do is speak the truth to people, Deborah. It's then left to them to accept it. Now, you've prepared yourself very well for your final curtain. Come walk with me. Oh 